everyone. Welcome to today's video. It's been quite a while since I've done a video like this one where I am just going to apply my makeup and chat about some things. I won't really be teaching any application tips as I go through this video like a regular tutorial. I am going to be filming another video after this, so I thought why not just turn on the camera while I apply my makeup and talk to you guys about some things that it seems a lot of people have questions about regarding me and my face at age 48, whether I've had surgery, whether I've had Botox, fillers, am I considering any surgery? And I have covered this topic in the past, but it's been a couple of years now, I think. And I do have a lot of new subscribers, which I'm very grateful for. So I thought it was time to address these topics once again. So here we go. By the way, all of the products that I'm using will be listed and linked in the description box as well as the shade names. So what made me decide that it was time to redo a video on the subject of surgery and Botox and fillers was a video I recently posted on TikTok. I've just started trying to put up more content on TikTok because it seems like that's where we're headed. I mean, I think a lot of people have been headed over to TikTok for a while now. It started, you know, with younger people and then when the pandemic hit, people were bored and so a lot of us older folks joined TikTok. So now really you can find people of all ages on that platform and less and less people and less and less brands are looking to Instagram for influencers and to, and to promote their products. It seems like people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter, which is why YouTube came up with YouTube Shorts, which are 60 second videos, 60 second or less videos. It's sort of their way of keeping up with TikTok. So my point is that I've started posting some content there. It's very intimidating to me. It takes me a long time to learn new editing and new platforms. Some people are really tech savvy and can easily adapt to new platforms, but I am not one of those people. So if you're not familiar with TikTok, they have these things which are called trends, which are videos that just a lot of people copy. One person does it, and then someone else does it, and then someone else does it, and it's just considered a trend. It's not like on YouTube where people get all upset. Like if you put up a video that is one concept and then someone else does that same concept with that same video title, people are always like, oh, so-and-so did that first. You need to credit them. Yes, you still need to give credit on, well, TikTok etiquette is very similar where you should give credit to the originator of the trend, but sometimes you're not really sure who started the trend. But the point is that that's what they're called. When you see someone doing the same thing that several other people have done, that's the trend. And a current trend, it, there's a hair on this one. A current trend on TikTok is to use this one specific song and show a photo of yourself at a younger age and then show yourself now. And the song's lyrics are something like, where did the time go? And you know, some people make it pretty sad because they show themselves at 16 and then they show themselves at 50 and they just maybe have had a rough life and it's really shown on their face. In some cases, people look older than they are. And in some cases, people don't. They've aged really, really well. And I think I've aged pretty well. I have never smoked a cigarette in my life. I have never been in a tanning bed. I eat pretty healthy, not great, but decently healthy. And I have worn sunscreen since 1992. I'll admit when I was a teenager in the 80s and early 90s, of course, like everyone else, I baked in the sun. I used Hawaiian Tropic tanning oil and little known fact, when I was 21, 22-ish, I participated in some Miss Hawaiian Tropic pageants 
around the city where I lived. I never won, but I think that's because I had no boobs. So let's get into the breast implants. Let's start there. So my whole life, up until I got the breast implants, I was an A cup. I barely had anything, but I was also extremely skinny. I think when I graduated high school, I was five, seven and a half. Well, I'm still about five, seven and a half. And I weighed around 118. I was a size two. And when I had my first child at age 26 or 27, everybody said, oh, your breasts are gonna get so big and you're gonna hate them. And mine <laughs> never got very big throughout my entire pregnancy. <clears throat> They just, they never got big. I think the biggest I was, was after my son was born. I was like a C cup, but then after I stopped nursing him, I went back to an A. And this was the early 2000s. So this was the era where there was that TV show, um, The Girls Next Door on E! with Hugh Hefner and the young women that <clears throat> lived in his house that were all you know playboy playmates and playboy was just having a resurgence at the time there was even a whole playboy tower here in las vegas with a big playboy bunny on the side and it was just the time for breast implants and i decided that i was not going to get them until after i had my second child Actually, let me back up. When I was younger, like in high school, I always hated having small boobs, but I don't recall ever wanting to actually go get breast implants until my sister, and I'm sorry if you see this and you didn't want me to give away your, well, it's not a secret. I think, I don't think she hides that she has breast implants as well, but after she had her second child, she got them. And when I saw hers and how nice they looked and how she could fill out a swimsuit top, that's when I started thinking, hmm, maybe I do want this too. So of course my husband was like, no, you don't need it. You know, you don't need to have the surgery. And well, I've always been the kind of person that just did what I wanted to do. So after my second child was born in 2004, told my husband that I made an appointment with a plastic surgeon. And then I went to that appointment and I told him that they had like a payment plan that we could do. And he said, no, if you really want it, just do it and we'll just pay for it. Don't do the payment plan. And so I was like, okay. And I scheduled it. My youngest was only, I think three months old at the time. And I remember sitting in the rocking chair, feeding him one night, right before my surgery. Um, it was a couple days maybe before my surgery and I started having a lot of regret. I started thinking, what am I doing? I have this little baby here. Why am I going for elective surgery? What if something happens to me? And I sort of panicked. Clearly, I still went through with it. And I was very happy. I had very little pain. I was so excited to finally be able to wear the things I wanted to wear. My confidence skyrocketed. Thankfully, I have had no problems and I have had them since 2004, again. I'm so thankful that I've had no problems whatsoever. And a lot of people say, oh, you need to get your breast implants sw swapped out every five or 10 years. And that's not necessarily true. I'm not saying I wanna keep these forever. In fact, I actually sort of want to get them taken out. Don't get me wrong, I still like having boobs sometimes, but other times I really don't. I find that as I get older, especially, a smaller chest is more 
elegant. And please, anyone with a naturally large bust area, I'm not saying that you are not elegant. I am just saying that for me, I feel like I, I personally would appear more elegant in certain outfits and dresses if my boobs were smaller. And then I also have a lot of trouble fitting into certain things. I will order a size medium in a top strictly to make sure there's room for my chest and then it'll be big everywhere else. Or buying wrap dresses or certain just certain articles of clothing. Those of you also with either naturally or enhanced larger breasts know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's a real struggle to find clothing that fits well, especially tops. So the problem is that when you've had them in for so long, you often need to get a lift if you take the implants out. And then I don't know if I would actually miss having them because I have gained weight over the years, like many of us do over time. And I feel like now they sort of balance me out. I'm a lot bigger on the bottom. My waist is bigger, my hips are bigger than I than they were when I got the implants. And now I feel like having the larger boobs, at least when I look at myself naked, I feel like they balance me out. Whereas if I didn't have them, I'd feel like everything at the bottom looked bigger. Where is my bronzer? Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, so that's where I'm torn. And I think, of course, my husband will, you know, he, he, he always is on board with anything I want to do, but I don't think he wants me to get them taken out. I'm just gonna be honest. And I think he would say the same thing. No, don't get them taken out. So we'll see. We will see. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Maybe I will just get a smaller implant put in. I'm currently a D cup, and I think I would be very happy with a full B or a C. So one of these days I will go in for a consultation. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows real quick and come back because they are so time consuming, but I will tell you that I'm going to use my favorite Ulta brow tint and then fill in a little bit where I need some more hairs using this NYX Lift and Snatch brow marker. All right, I'm so glad I took that time off camera to do the brows without recording because I remembered as I was filling these in that I totally forgot to go back to that TikTok trend and why it prompted me to do this video. Well, when I did mine, I showed a photo from when I was 22 and then I showed a photo from when I, well now, at age 48. And it went not really viral, but sort of viral. Most of my TikToks get anywhere between like a thousand and maybe 5,000 views. This one, the first day had like 30,000. And that's how TikTok is. You can do just tons of videos that get hardly any views. And then one just hits the algorithm and takes off. So um, anyway, uh, gosh, this, I know a lot of you watching that are my age, you can uh, understand or relate to the whole brain fog, brain fart that is happening constantly. <laughs> I'm always losing my train of thought. All right, the TikTok trend. So it went sort of viral and most of the comments were very nice. It reached a very different audience though than my other TikToks because my other TikToks are mostly beauty and fashion related. So it's mostly women that see them and comment. This one, however, has a lot of male comments. And now I have a lot of male followers on TikTok, which once they realize that I will not be dancing around in skimpy clothing, they will probably unfollow, but 
whatever. So, um, most of the comments were very, very nice. Like, oh, you look better now. You look so beautiful. Just being very complimentary. But I also received a lot of comments that I used to get a lot here on YouTube, but I think most of my viewers know by now, you know, that I'm, I've always been open and honest about any work that I have had done. I see no reason to hide it, to pretend that I haven't done things in the past. And I'm going to get to if I have anything right now in a moment. But um, a lot of the comments were, um, yeah, that's what a lot of fillers and Botox and filters and plastic surgery do. I mean, just all of these assumptions, like, oh my God, she's had so much plastic surgery, it's insane, or yeah, now show us without the makeup, now show us without the filter, and all of this stuff. Just, you know, just people wanting to be haters, and just refusing to believe that people can actually age well if they take good care of themselves, and they don't smoke, and they don't um, abuse drugs, and they don't use tanning beds, and all of that. So also keep in mind that I have been in the beauty industry since I was 21 years old. So I've had access to just all of the best products for many, many years now. In addition to, you know, not smoking and not being in the sun. And also I feel like I have very good genetics. My mom has appeared in several of my videos as has my, no, my grandma has not. I want, she's appeared in some like Instagram photos and um, stories and stuff. And she is going to be 97 in September and she looks fabulous. She lives in a assisted living type of apartment. And when you go in there, if you were to go in there, you would never know that my grandma was one of the oldest people living there. You would never, ever know. She looks so much younger than so many of the residents there. So I just have some good genetics and I'm very grateful for it. I've also had very, very oily skin my entire life, which keeps the wrinkles from forming. When your skin is very, very hydrated naturally, it does keep wrinkles from forming. So all right, a lot of you might be thinking, Risa, get to the point here. So receiving all those comments, at first I responded to a couple of them. Mostly I did what I do here, <clears throat> which is just delete the comment and block the person. But there were just so many. The comments were coming in fast and furious. And I would say maybe every 10th one was something like that. And I did acknowledge that um, TikTok has a built-in beauty filter. So when you go to record a TikTok, if you're using the TikTok app to record the video, you have to turn off the beauty filter. Otherwise, it will smooth your skin a little bit. Well, I guess, I guess I'm, as I said, new to TikTok. I, from what I understand, it's been in the last month or so that they have made the beauty filter even stronger. It used to be not so strong where it was just a subtle smoothing of the skin and now it really does smooth the skin quite a bit. And I didn't realize when I made that video that you do have to turn that off if you want TikTok to show your, your, you know, your natural skin texture. So for that video, I did say that there was you know, the built-in beauty mode that TikTok has but I didn't use any other type of filter. Like if you know how if you go on Snapchat or even on Instagram, they have these filters that completely alter your face. They alter your features, they can put makeup on you. I mean, they're just, you know, they're fun, but I can see how they could be problematic because even I will look at those filters when it's given me like this perfect nose job and everything. And I'm thinking, gosh, I really should get my nose redone because that nose is, that nose is nice. <laughs> I would like to have that nose. So, um, Anyway, I did not have any of that going on in that TikTok, but yeah, I, I just stopped responding after a while. I stopped actually even looking at the comments because I just didn't want to read them. And I, there were so many that I could not keep up with um, 
deleting and blocking these people. I just figured, you know, haters are gonna hate, let them say what they want to. Then, however, these people started transferring over to my, some of these people started transferring over to my Instagram because I do have my Instagram attached to my TikTok. On my TikTok profile, you can hit the little Instagram symbol. It'll take you to that person's Instagram page. So, um, I received a comment on one of my recent Instagram photos that said something like, oh, how pretty are you? Now, have you done a video about all the work you've had done? And, um, you know, it must take just so much. Isn't it tiring to like constantly have to, oh, she said like, I see that you've had your nose done, Botox, filler. Um, you've probably had your breasts done as well. And, you know, not to mention the ton of makeup that you wear. And so, yes, I was going to just block and delete that comment, but I decided to respond and I said, yes, I have had my nose done at age 22. I had my breast done at age 32, I think it was. But, oh, and I also said, yes, I've had Botox and filler in the past, but it's been a couple of years since I've had Botox. It's been a couple of years since I've had lip filler. And I said, it actually doesn't take that much effort for me to look the way I do. I'm, I'm thankful to, you know, good genes and all that. Same thing I said earlier to you guys. Um, and then she came back with something like, oh, sure, good genes, LOL. I dare you to go out in public without makeup and hair extensions and all that. And I was like, I do that all the time. I do that all the time. And then I went and clicked on her profile and she had no profile picture and she had no content. So I was just like, you know, forget it. I'm not gonna go back and forth with this person. I'm just gonna block them and delete the comments, delete the whole thread. Cause there were some kind Risa Does Makeup followers that um, defended me and, um, you know, kind of had some choice words for her as well. But I just decided to um, not engage anymore and just block the whole thing. But um, yeah, I have, I have, I go out in public all the time without my makeup on and without my hair done. I, the way I started this video is how I often go run errands with my hair like this and no makeup on. I'll put on, like now it's summertime here in Vegas, so it's so hot. I'll put on just a strapless maxi dress and some flip flop sandals and I will go to Target, Walmart, the grocery store, wherever I need to go. Would I meet a friend for lunch like that? Probably not. Would I go out for a nice dinner with my husband like that? No, but the thing is I really enjoy this process. What I'm doing right now, it relaxes me. I have fun doing this. And do I think I look different with makeup versus without? Heck yeah, heck yeah. I definitely do not turn any heads, or maybe I just don't pay attention, but I don't think I turn many heads when I don't have, you know, makeup and a cute outfit on, and, you know, my hair doesn't look cute, all that. And I do feel like I do when I am all dolled up. I feel very confident walking into a room. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but Yes, I'm not uh, oblivious to the fact that makeup really helps me. But I also don't wear it for the approval of others and other people's attention. I do it because I like to look in the mirror and feel good about myself. And yeah, I do feel like when I am put together, when I am wearing a cute outfit, when my makeup's done, when my hair's done, I get treated better. I think we all know that, whether it's right or not right. I'm thirsty, I need something to drink. Um, it's just, I think it's just facts. I think that people, oh, I just spit on my mirror. People who look a certain way do get treated better. So all of that that went down last week is what prompted me to do this video, to address certain things like what I've had done, what I haven't had done, why I haven't done certain things, 
And I think it was about two years ago now, I think September will be two years, I did a video where I took the viewers with me. It was my first ever sort of vlog, sort of not, um, where I went and got Botox. And the injector, Trevor, did an entire Q&A. Like we covered everything, and I will try to remember to link the video in the description box for you. So he went over everything, and we explained that for me, we weren't going to do Botox in my forehead. I have never, ever had Botox in my forehead. I am lucky that I do not have deep lines in my forehead. I do have lines like here, and you can see my forehead moves. And like this, this doesn't really bother me. These little indentations here, like he, injectors have always asked me in the past, like, hey, do you want something there? And it really doesn't bother me because I feel like when I'm not doing that, when I'm just rested, you, it's not that bad. I mean, it's getting worse and worse, so maybe someday I'll want to fill that in, but I don't have strong 11s that are there when my face is rested. And I do feel like, like these lines right here are definitely, they, at, at, right now, they seem to go away when my face is rested. But when I lift up, I don't know, point is I've never had Botox in my forehead because I have hooded eyes. And what Botox does, if you don't, if you aren't already aware, which I'm sure most of you are, Botox, um, freezes the muscle and it, it uh, oh my God, paralyzes the muscle. So what that would do is that would drop my brows. So when I have gotten Botox in the past, it's just been around my eyes for these lines right here, which by the way, these lights really, really blow out the lines. But if I didn't, or soften the lines, I should say, but if I didn't have these lights here, you wouldn't be able to see the makeup well. It's always a challenge for a YouTuber, especially a mature YouTuber, to get the lighting right because we want to show you reality, but we also, oh, that had some fallout. Um, but we also want to show you the makeup in the best light, best lighting situation. So that's challenging. Um, what am I doing now? Oh, curling my lashes. Uh, so yeah, um, I have gotten Botox around my eyes and then he'll do a drop there and there. And he goes over all of this in that video so that I can get a little bit of a lift here. So my eyes are less hooded. But here's the thing. I haven't done it in a long, long time because for me, Botox does not last very long. And I've tried Dysport too, and I think there's another one that's out there now that I've tried. By the way, you guys, this is the new um, eyelash curler from Refer, and it is amazing, absolutely amazing. My lashes have never been this curled. Um, okay, losing my train of thought, losing my train of thought. Where was I? Okay, yes, so it doesn't last on me. And in Nevada, we have this law because several years ago there was an issue with um, somebody at a hospital. Some doctor was reusing needles on patients. I know, horrible. And all these people had to be tested for HIV and hepatitis and all this stuff. And so Nevada has this law where you have to use, you have to pay, you don't necessarily have to use, but you have to pay for the entire vial of Botox. If you go to California or some other states, you can just get 20 units and pay for 20 units, maybe $10 a unit, pay $200, boom, bam, off the door. Here in Nevada, you have to pay for 50 units. There's 50 units in a vial. You have to pay, regardless of if you use all 50 units or not, you have to pay for those 50 units. So you can get Botox here for around eight or $9 a unit, but you still have to pay for 50, even if you don't need it or use it. So my injector, he would, um, he used all 50. I don't, like I said, he didn't put it in my forehead or, or maybe he didn't use all 50, I don't know. But it just, it takes, for me, it takes two full weeks to kick in, two full weeks. And then it lasts like three weeks. So it's just not worth the money to me. It would be really awful if I just poke myself in the eye right now. Um, so I haven't gotten it and I don't know. If I will again, but 
Another thing that confuses people, hang on a second, I'm going to do this off camera real quick. So something that confuses people a lot is the difference between Botox and filler. People would always say to me when I did have lip filler, again, a couple years ago, I had it dissolved, gosh, I think three years ago now. Um, people would say, quit getting Botox in your lips. Botox does not go in the lips. Botox paralyzes the muscle. Botox goes in the areas that I just showed you. Now, that said, Botox is now sometimes being placed around the mouth or here, I think, to give like lip lifts or to give the um, mouth, a, to have it turn up or something. I don't know. Um, but as far as like plumping the lips, lip filler is not Botox. Lip filler is something like uh, Juvederm, something like that. Other, I can't think of all the other names of the lip fillers, but those are hyaluronic acids, whereas Botox is botulism toxin, something. Clearly I am not a medical expert. So the lip filler. Yeah, I got the lip filler twice. The first time I got just a small amount and I really loved it. So like most people, you go back for more. You think, oh, I started off too, too small. I need to go bigger. I need to go bigger. So I went and got a little bit more about six months later. And that's when the problems began. It was like they just kept getting bigger and bigger. And lip injections are only supposed to last anywhere from three to six months, I think, or three to nine months if you kind of keep doing it the more you do it. And supposedly Botox is the same way. The more you do it, the more often you do it, the longer it's supposed to last, but that has not been the case for me. I mean, I've never gotten it consistently, like every three months. It's always been like maybe once or twice a year. Um, but, well, except for the last couple of years, it hasn't been at all, as I was saying. But, um, yeah, it's interesting how Botox won't, last and Dysport won't last but filler lasted in my lips like you just I mean some people would love that because hey you don't need to go back and pay the money to get them re-injected but I started developing this weird ledge like this weird indentation on my top lip and it just looked it looked bad so I ultimately went and had it dissolved and I have not done anything since. Back to that TikTok video, I recall someone else commented, um, you need to stop getting your lips done, or um, you really don't need those contacts. <sighs> and that's when I just kind of rolled my eyes and just was going to respond and just didn't because, oh my goodness, my eyes have been the same. I've never worn contacts in my life. I am afraid to put anything in my eyes. I do need contacts. I've started to have to wear my glasses way more often than not, and I feel like I'm the next step is going to be contacts. But I would not get colored contacts. I really like my eye color. And like most people, my eye color changes with the lighting. If I'm in front of a window with a lot of sunlight, my eyes look piercing blue. If I'm in a more dimly lit room, they don't look as blue. They can look more green. They can look more gray. They can look more, blue. you know, it's just the things that people say. I'm just like <laughs> The assumptions people make, should I say, are just sort of cray cray sometimes. So I think that covers what I've done in the past. And just to reiterate, I currently have nothing. No Botox, no filler, nada. I have, oh, there's one more thing I forgot to mention that I have had in the past. I have had a little cheek filler and that I really, really love. So I think I'm gonna do that about once a year, I think. The last time I went and got a little bit and I can't recall what he put in my cheeks and it was just one syringe I want to say it was Restylane or G if anybody's curious I will find out for you um, but it was very very natural and I loved it so much I kind of wanted to go back and get another syringe but then I thought about all of those people that I see that have too much cheek filler and when they smile, their cheeks are like up in their eyeballs and it just doesn't, I don't want to be one of those people that starts getting like uh, plastic surgery dysmorphia where they just think more is more and they can't see themselves 
the way other people see them. Thankfully, I have my mother who is very, very critical and would just be on me if I got too much filler. She would, she would tell me I look terrible and she would probably drag me while I was sleeping to go get it dissolved. <laughs> that's how she, that's how my mother rolls. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so I decided that I think just maybe once a year I'll go get the cheek filler because we do, as we get older, tend to lose volume in that area and getting a little bit of filler right here a little bit can soften these this area right here. I've often thought about putting filler in this area, but I'm always told that you need to have something there. Like if I had really deep lines here, yes, I would probably go fill them in. If you have nothing here, that looks very unnatural. So that is definitely something that I would do again. So that's where I'm at currently with Botox and filler. And now I want to talk about, well, I mentioned that I was considering explantation. Look how pretty that is. Oh my God. I love it. Explantation of the implants. But I'm also considering, I actually had an appointment for a consultation and I canceled it. I was considering upper blepharoplasty, which is, you know, getting rid of the excess skin on the lid so my eyes aren't as hooded. But when it comes to the eyes, I'm more nervous about any other area of the face because it's my eyes. I, I mean, that terrifies me of something, you know, that something could go wrong. And I also was thinking, well, okay, wait, if I don't have hooded eyes anymore, how am I going to teach my hooded eye tutorials, which are my best viewed? I just had my blush brush. I gotta add a little bit more blush. Um, those are my best viewed tutorials. So like, why, why, what would I do? So I'm not saying I won't ever get it done. I just don't know if I even, oh, hang on, let me do the lip liner and come back. I also don't know if I have the downtime for an eye surgery. Oh, I got makeup like all over my hands. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. My friend has had it done. Actually, my friend and a couple members of my family because we have just genetically hooded eyes and they do get more hooded as you age. So I'm told that you need like a good three to four weeks of downtime after that kind of eye surgery. And I've got to film videos. I was thinking like if I did it, I would, oh, what's that? I would take you guys along with me, you know, vlog the experience. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. So I'm actually done for the most part. I'm going to apply just some corner eyelashes and then I'm gonna fix my hair. Then I'll come back and address the only thing I haven't addressed, which is the nose. All right, this is the completed look for the filming of my next video. As I mentioned, I have one more thing to address and it is one more surgery that I am considering and May I stress, considering, I don't know if I'm going to do it because I have the same fears that I've had for years regarding a second nose surgery. I did have a rhinoplasty at age 22. I am not gonna lie, I did have a, red, a rather large nose that I was made fun of quite a bit in middle school. Not so much in high school, people matured a little bit, but yeah, I still got made fun of, but I make, got made fun of it a lot in uh, junior high. And several of my friends actually had rhinoplasties when we were in high school. However, I did not get mine until I was a senior in college. I was either a junior or a senior. I remember I kept bringing it up to my parents saying that I wanted to get my nose done and they kept saying no. And then I really don't know what made my mom change her mind. Maybe it was because I did have a deviated septum, I had trouble breathing and insurance was going to cover it. And I think we wanted to get it done under their insurance before I was kicked off at a certain age. And then anyway, I had to get my own insurance. So we went ahead and got it done. And of course this was in the early to mid nineties and we did not have the ways to research surgeons like we do now. And I remember going to see maybe 
two, just two surgeons. And I left the decision up to my mom. And um, I'm not blaming her for my not being happy for how it came out. I mean, I think it's better than it was, but I still have a deviated septum. It has been uneven since it was done. I have a little bit of an indentation here that was filled. I actually had that little indentation filled with filler about four years ago. And it's just now, you know, how I was saying filler like just stays in my face. It really does because I'm only now several years later starting to see the indentation come back here and my nostrils are uneven and I get comments, not all the time, but once in a while, um, I'll see a comment that will say, does anybody know what happened to her nose? Or you really should go on the show botched. Like I'll, I'll get that stuff once in a while. And yeah, I just let it roll off my back because overall I'm happy with my appearance. And uh, I went to see an ENT recently for another reason, because I have had ringing in my ears since October. So about two months ago, I went to go see an ENT. And the first thing he did was obviously look in my nose and he said, do you know that you have a severely deviated septum and that you have collapsed nasal passages? And I said, I knew about the deviated septum. I was unaware of collapsed nasal passages. And no wonder I still really struggle with breathing through my nose. So um, I really should at least get that fixed. I don't know if there's much that can be done um, for the look of the nose at this point because I'm I'm afraid of it looking worse. I'm afraid of coming out and having just like a collapsed nose or something like that. And I know there are several great doctor um, surgeons out there that do revision rhinoplasties. Rhinoplasties are one of the top, if not the top, plastic surgery that does need to be revised. Most people have more than one rhinoplasty, but I'm just kind of like the eyes. I'm just really nervous and just don't know if I can do it. And the only thing is I would like to be able to feel better. So yeah, these are things I'm considering. Eye surgery, no surgery, explantation. So I will obviously let you guys know if I do any of those things. As I said at the very beginning of this video, I think I said this, I'm very transparent. I have no reason to lie. I do feel very lucky that I have, I think, aged pretty well. Do I look in the mirror first thing in the morning and think, damn, she looks good? No, I do not. I have days where I just feel like everything is falling apart on my face, on my body, um, with my health, with my mental state. I mean, I have struggles just like anybody else. And uh, doing YouTube and being on social media is my job. So I try not to bring that all, lay that all on you. But I do know that some of you um, actually appreciate when I share these things because I've been told it makes me more relatable and um, you wanna hear some of those things like what I've addressed today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too boring. If you did like it, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, I don't always talk about topics like this. As I said, it took me a couple years to revisit this subject matter. Most of my content is just all in fun, all beauty, tips, tutorials, reviews, fashion, all that good stuff. So if that sounds good to you and you are not, and you are not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you in the Risa Does Makeup family. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. The username is the same everywhere. It's all Risa Does Makeup. As I mentioned, all the products will be listed and linked in the description box. And I look forward to seeing you all in my next video.